first polar bear for Chuck Jonko. Years of waiting become centered north as you leave warm reservation to travel unknown trails guided by knowing that you are at the center of the universe wherever you are. You try to walk with all beings knowing you do your best to do what is right. Your feet are light as song, walking bear's song that urges you on, urges you on to country of your ancestors, the Cree and the Chippeway, and walking bear comes finally home. With my writing, I, I look at some of these older poets and I see some of them that have this really calm to them, even though they're looking, facing these serious issues in their community. And but I see this calm in them and this unwavering ability to just like stare it down and then produce this beautiful thing. <laughs> I love to get to that point, you know? It looks really cool. <laughs> in the past used to do, you know, like my tribe, we didn't travel all as one big group, you know, all around the country. Uh, we split up into bands. Most of the year we traveled in small bands. It took less resources from the land. You weren't at risk of being wiped out in one fell swoop. If an enemy came along, there were some brilliant ways of ensuring our survival. But at certain times of the year, we would come together, all together as all the bands that made up uh, the Cheyenne people. and. We would uh, make decisions, the leaders would get together, where we were going to hunt next, what were the challenges we were going to meet. So that's what we thought about when we brought this together was we're bringing together all these bands, kind of. Bring them together, honor the past, talk about where we're at in the present, what are the challenges we're up against, and then talk about how do we move forward, how do we meet those challenges, how do we ensure our survival. Also that our voice becomes clearer, the definition of who we are, we take that even closer and we make that uh, more clear to people from our own perspective, who we are, and uh, that alone will ensure our survival. I do my art basically because for my conflicts, you know, my writing helps me deal with those things uh, all the time. It, it, I don't work it out most of the time, but helps me deal with it. It's art in the postmodern and how it applies to Indian country. Everybody wants to uh, romanticize uh, about Indians and, and, and or stereotype them one or the other. And art basically finds that middle ground. The sun setting rays must have done something spectacular, dipping west to where the high line faded away, lightly touching a farmer's face along the silty Milk River, letting him know the thoughts of his wife's supper of meat and potatoes and thick slices of white bread. Uh, writing uh, helps me work things out, the mysteries, the, the unanswered things, but, uh, the big questions. Yeah. I write about Wolf Point, I write about the high line, and uh, I think I was, I, uh, just uh, about a month ago, I finished a poem. It had nothing to do with Indians, zero Indians in there. So maybe I'm, I'm at that point now, I don't know. <laughs> I'm post-Indian now, okay? Native people should make art, Native art that is honest, and not to make generic Indian art, but to make art that comes from them. So to me, it doesn't matter what a Native person does, as long as it's coming from that source of creation. When I was in the, in the early 80s, I went to uh, undergrad school at the University of Washington, and they had this amazing uh, conference. It was a Native American Art History Conference, and I think for one of the first times, they actually invited Native artists. You know, it was uh, unbelievable. Um, they, the, the conversations they're having at the symposium about um, post-Indian art, post-ethnic art, I actually found extremely relevant to me. I kind of think that I'm 
the prototypical post-ethnic. Uh, I am a Native American artist, but my art is not about my cultural identity. It's completely outside of that. Most of my work is interactive or experiential. I try to engage the viewer to participate either emotionally or physically with the works. A lot of times it's very hands-on. The idea that all Native Americans should make work about identity is unfair, or that all should be post-ethnic artists is also unreasonable. I mean, it takes all kinds. I mean, I am not the person who is appropriate to be making that kind of artwork, but the artwork I make also has uh, value in its own stance. One of the art projects that I touched on earlier was the Treaty Card Project. That was taking the entire Hellgate Treaty of 1855, which established our Indian reservation, and shrinking it down to where you could fold it up and it was the size of a little credit card. A lot of it isn't uh, discussed or talked about in the history books or anything, you know, it's just kind of glossed over. I look at art as kind of information. You know, art is a, is a stimulus for dialogue and it has the power of informing somebody or at least stimulating thought. Well, I love coming to events like this, but what I loved about this is the small community feeling because a lot of times you go to those uh, like CAA, College Art Association, and they're just massive and people are just running around and it just feels competitive. While here in this kind of conferences, it just feels like um, people just wanting to be around each other and learn from each other and share. I understand that there are so many issues plaguing our community like suicide, like housing, access to fresh water and fresh food, infrastructure needs, education. But I think that Native art should not be overlooked and its role in our communities. And that would be to include Native artists as you're planning neighborhoods or as you're building playgrounds. Art is not just for the privileged. It's not just something that just the elite have access to. Art is something that is in our everyday lives. Let's just work together and put a cultural spin on for our communities and maybe we can work on defining that for ourselves and we can define what Native art means and what can we do as artists that will help better our community because I think that's on the mind of every Indian person. What can we do to make our communities better? What can we do to help our youth have a better tomorrow? When I first came here, most of the exhibits that I saw in museums in the state had a tendency to frame Indian culture in the past. And, um, and I think, in general, we do that. We put the Indian and Indian culture and the heyday of the Indian as a thing of the past, when in fact, it, that's not true. We felt like our audience needs to gain greater awareness and appreciation for what Indian artists are doing in our state. And so we decided to dedicate one of the galleries in the new building to contemporary American Indian art.